Yeah, I've got a, a little PowerPoint thing uh, to show you here, and then we're going to go out on the web as well, and, uh, and I'll demonstrate some of the things we're working on. As I said, I was working uh, in computational fluid mechanics at the time, and my son started to play video games. He was of the age where he would beat me easily playing video games, and I noticed how much he and his friends um, were addicted to the <laughs> to video games. Um, they knew every magic code. They knew every magic room. They were their minds were just full of all kinds of crap um, having to do with video games. And the reason is is that computers and television and interactive things are an excellent way to deliver information. So uh, I asked my boss if I could spend a little time to see if I could make an interactive kind of computer program for my own benefit, uh, something I would do shock waves and maybe do some airfoil analysis and stuff like that. But instead of going to the big mainframe computers and submitting jobs and waiting for the answer to come back, I would work something interactive. I'd learn how to work GUIs and, and uh, uh, provide graphical input and get graphical output. And as soon as I started building the first one, the light bulb went off in my head that this was the way I should have learned fluid mechanics when I was going to school. Again, it's a good way to deliver information. So uh, I was contacted by some people who were working here at NASA Glenn's um, education office. They heard I was building little software things for colleges. And they said, could I take some of these and simplify them so that um, we could use them uh, in, the, in the high school classroom or middle school classroom. And again, this was about 15 years ago when the web was just getting started and um, a lot of things were just getting started. And I just got started and we've been working on it ever since. It's, it's, been, it's been real interesting. So what we went off to do uh, let me let me jump to the PowerPoint here. We'll see if uh, see if Dave's got this all set up. Waha! Can we see that? Okay. Okay, good. The key thing on this slide, besides the date, is my email address: Thomas J Benson at nasa gov. And uh, you guys are encouraged. Uh, following the talk, uh, if you want to contact me about anything you hear today or about, or about anything we can do to help your kids in the classroom, you are, you are more than welcome to email me right at my, uh, right at my NASA email address. Uh, I spend uh, probably an hour, an, an hour a day every morning just answering email from people. So, um, so it's fine. Please do. And what we're trying to do here, we're going to give, I'm going to do kind of a, man, maybe a half hour talk, something quick, and then we'll open it up for lots of Q&A. But I want to give you a little background, show some examples of some of the educational software we've built. And we realized early on when we started releasing the, the software that people really most people don't have the math and science background to understand what the software does and what it's doing. And so I, I started to uh, originally just travel around and give talks to people about what what the software was doing. And then people says, well, could you give me your slides or could you provide me some additional information? And what we did was we built a great big website um, that explains all the science and math. And, and the website is sort of the equal of equal importance with the software itself. That's where you're going to get the real science and math, and that's where we store everything. Um, we store the software there. We sort of store the explanations. We've had a number of teacher workshops where teachers have come in and, and developed activities around the software, and that stuff's all stored. Uh, at the at the website as well. 
So we're going to talk about this uh, beginner's guide. They call, every one of them is what's called a beginner's guide. And we'll tell you about what we're working on now, and then we'll answer questions. The objective here is pretty simple. And the, object, the bigger objective is to just use computer technology and the fact that kids are interested in computers, and they're also interested in airplanes and rockets. They may think math and science is boring, or why do I have to study this, or why am I doing this? But they like airplanes and rockets. And so if we can use airplanes and rockets and how they work to get their interest and use the computers as the mechanism for delivering the information, it's a good way to get kids hooked in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So we want to, that, that was our objective, was to use this computer technology to do this. Along the way, uh, as I said, we've had a number of teacher workshops where uh, teachers have developed educational materials built around uh, the software, and we'll show you where those are and what those look like and how you get them. And we're using the Internet or the World Wide Web uh, as the distribution system. So we were out in front of this a long time ago, kind of before, uh, before the, the portal. Now, one of the big problems always on the computer is finding stuff. So here's how to find it. The easiest way to find my stuff is to go use your favorite search engine. I will say Google it, uh, using Google as a verb. But use your favorite search engine and just type in Beginner's Guide to Aeronautics. Uh, you can go to the NASA portal as well. There's, there's connections off of the aeronautics pages. There's connections off of some of the educational pages. But the easiest way is just Google Beginner's Guide to Aeronautics, and you'll come to this page. And here's the big ugly URL that goes with it that nobody wants to copy down. Now, what that page looks like, let's uh, get out of this. We'll come back to that, but let's get out of this and go to this. This is what it looks like. Ooh, uh. So there's... Uh, a whole bunch of different beginner's guides, all built around the subject of aeronautics. So there's one section on just airplanes and aerodynamics. There's one section that was built um, by some people on another project that was just called the Kids Page. And this is for younger students. Uh, there was a whole section that we worked on during Centennial of Flight that has to do with the Wright brothers and the invention of the airplane and what went on there. There's a whole big section on jet engines and on ramjet engines and how jet engines work and some of the chemistry involved with that. When we started working on the aerodynamics of airplanes, as it turns out, the physics involved with making an airplane fly is exactly the same physics as how a big league pitcher throws a curveball. And I'm kind of a sports buff, so we have a whole section of the web thing about the aerodynamics of the game of baseball, both pitching and hitting. There's software you can play with, and then there's explanation of the science and math of how all this stuff works. Uh, my kids also played soccer, and last year we built a whole thing on the aerodynamics of soccer. So you can go in uh, using this software and set up a corner kick or set up a penalty kick, which I hate penalty kicks now. Or <laughs> Those kicks at the end of the game, I hate them. But you can set them up and kick them and make the ball hook and curve and bend them like Beckham. And we describe how the science and math works. As well, kids like to build model rockets. And we actually have two separate sites on how model rockets work. One on uh, the little solid rockets and stomp rockets and air rockets and ballistic shells. And another one just on water rockets. A lot of kids, a lot of teachers in their, uh, air, in their physics classes have kids build model rockets. and 
We have a simulator that will let you set up and design the thing in the, in the computer and then go shoot it and see how it works. Um, I became an aeronautical engineer because I flew kites. And so we have a whole section of this thing on kites. You can design all kinds of different kites and see how they work and, what again, what the science and math is. And then getting a little more uh, towards the college level, we have a thing on wind tunnels and how they work. Uh, I get a lot of requests from students about, I want to build a wind tunnel for uh, a science fair project. So I've got some plans for some simple wind tunnels on here that kids can build. Uh, and what you do with it and how you get information out. And then these last two are for college kids about shock waves and what happens when you got to start worrying about temperature. But if you come to any of these, this page, there's, an, there's a kind of a, a bounce page that you go to that, that kind of gives you a general description of what the website is about. And every website here has an index. And this index is just a list of all the pages that go in this website. So every one of these entries here is an individual web page about a single topic, including parts of an airplane and Newton's laws and the forces on an airplane and some real basic stuff in math about functions and how you calculate a volume and uh, how you compare two numbers, what a ratio is, a little bit about sine, cosine, and tangent, uh, some things about basic aerodynamics forces, um, all kinds of different topics. Like I said, every one of these guys is a web page. And if you go to any one of the web pages, let's just for fun pick that one on Newton since we do a lot of things about Newton's laws of motion. You click on this page, you come to a single web page. And all my web pages are formatted the same way. And the format goes like this. At the top, there's a graphic. And the graphic describes what's going on on the web page. This happens to list Newton's three laws of motion. You can grab this web page by right-clicking on it and then save as, save picture as. And this thing is sized just right to drop into PowerPoint. So if you want to go through the website and make your own PowerPoint presentations for the students, or if you want the students to make their own PowerPoint presentations, they can kind of go through the site and grab whatever they want. You're welcome to use these things they're all in the public domain, and anybody can use them for free, as long as you don't package it and try to sell it. Now, this sort of lists Newton's laws of motion, but down below here we have a text that describes what Newton's laws of motion are, where they came from, and a little bit of the history to it. So this is like a regular textbook. I put a lot of math in here. Uh, I'm kind of a applied math guy, so I like to throw a lot of math around. Um, also, you'll notice there are little blue guys here. And these little blue guys are hyperlinks. So the idea at my website is that it's inquiry-based learning. So the student or the teacher can come in here and go where they want to go and learn what they want to learn by clicking on the hyperlinks. So up here, we were talking about all three of Newton's laws of motion. Down here, uh, we can go take a look just at the second law. And if you click on that, you go to a separate page that talks just about the second law. Now, you can always jump back to the previous page by using the Go Back button at the top. And so it, it's. It's the job of the student or the teacher to work their way through the website. At the bottom of the page, we have some navigation. Uh, it's kind of interesting. When I first built the website, some of the teachers that I was, was working with here didn't like this whole format at all. They, they didn't like the idea that you jump from here to there and anybody can jump where they want to jump. They wanted a rather organized 
give me page one, give me page two, give me page three, like you do in a regular textbook. So what I did was I went in and I created what I call guided tours. And there's a web page you go to get on a guided tour. And then down at the bottom of every one of these web pages is a little connector that'll take you to the next page. So I kind of lay them out in order if you want to just scroll through. And you can go back to the previous page. You can go on to the next page. But this will take you through the guided tour of Newton's Laws of Motion. I also, when I started laying this out, got into the problem that one page could be referenced from a couple of different topics. So I interconnected all of the indices to an individual page. So when you get down here, if we're originally we're talking aerodynamics, but I was Newton's laws are also important for how wind tunnels work. If you click on this guy, you head off to the wind tunnel group of pages. So there's, uh, on the web, everything is interconnected, and, and I have interconnected them. So, and probably even more important are these little guys. At the bottom of every, every page are some buttons, and the buttons are, are coded by grade level. And as I said, we had a variety of teachers come out and work with us here on making activities. And what we did was we had them create their own activities for their own age students. And we group those and keep those uh, here on the website. So if you click on any one of these guys at the bottom, and we're just going to pick a random guy here. I don't know what we're going to end up with. This will be fun. Uh, if we take a 6-8 and I click on this button, Here's an activity about forces on airplanes and the resulting motion. And this is an activity. And there's a page with a lot of questions for students to answer. Now, our, our, our teacher activities have four pages for every activity. One is the activity itself, which is right here. One of them is a worksheet. That is size, so you can just put this right through your printer, and you can get the kids can write in their answers. Uh, this has no hyperlink connections at all, so you just you'll have to work with that one. There is one page that talks about the standards and which math, science, engineering, and technology standards this teacher-generated activity is addressing. So that we talk about the national standards. Who'd, and and who made it? <laughs> and off of the standards page, we figured the standards would be enough to stop students from doing any more looking around. So off of the standards page is the answers. <laughs> so all of the activities not only have a worksheet, but they have the answers. And you can only get to the answers from the standards page. So there's the standards, and we can go back to the activity. And I'm probably so lost now, I don't know if I can get back to the original uh, web page that I was playing with. Hello there. Yeah, we're back on Newton's Laws. So that's what all of these guys are. Now, as I said, we also have a couple of interesting things available. Um, myself. And uh, Roger Storm, who's a teacher here at, uh, in Cleveland, and now he works as head of our digital learning network. During the centennial flight, Roger Storm and I used to put on bowlers and hard collars and white shirts and tell the story of the Wright brothers as Wilbur and Orville Wright. So we traveled around the country uh, doing talks about Wilbur and Orville Wright. And as part of that, we made some movies, and the movies are our podcasts, and we store the podcasts here on the website. So if we go back to the uh, PC here talking about Newton's laws, it happens to reference one of the movies of Wilbur and Orville, and I'm going to click on this, and we'll see if this uh, spews out where it takes us. Oh, it's going to actually play the movie. So 
Um, again, students, this has sound with it, which uh, this PC won't play, but it, oh, it does play. So the students can bring this up and play around with it, and this is going to be Wilbur Norville Wright talking about uh, forces in flight. So there's Wilbur and Orville, and they become alive, and they walk out of the pictures, and then they walk into their workshop and uh, start discussing uh, <laughs> start discussing Newton's laws of motion. So that's also available at the website as well. I'm going to I'm going to kill this or get out of this if I can. Yes, I can go back. Good. So they can play with that. Probably the coolest thing people can play with though are the uh, software packages. At at the index, every one of these guys not only have a beginner's guide and an index, we have some software. The software that goes with aerodynamics is our foil sim package. Foil Sim lets you design airplane wings. So again, let's, let's see if we can go back here to the to the computer, and I'll bring this up and show you how this guy works. Right here, these are Java applets, and Java applets will run on any platform. So they will run on a PC, they'll run on uh, Macs, they'll run on Unix boxes. Um, actually, I, I'd like to get uh, NASA to let me go off and put this thing on a, uh, on a Blackberry or on a, on a phone. Uh, should be able to do that as well. And what it's doing, uh, there's flow going by this airplane wing. And this airplane wing can be looked at uh, three-dimensionally or it can be looked at two-dimensionally whatever you wish and over here are some answers about how much lift this wing will make how much drag it makes in the, what's called the lift to drag ratio and then there's some graphs of how air is going around this wing and uh, hello there what are you doing get out of here what are you doing hello there oh get out Get out wherever you are. Come back. Got two windows here competing. Um, the key here is that you can go in with sliders or you can type in numbers and you can change the conditions of what's going on on the wing. You can change its angle, which changes the numbers of calculated lift and drag, or you can change the shape. Let's go to 2D. It's a little bit easier to see. Hello there. Let's do 2D from the edge. Not geometry. Go to the streamlines. Go to moving. There we go. Let's zoom on in here. So you can play around with this shape. And it will solve. And it, as I said, it will not only do airplane wings, It'll do a flat plate. It'll do elliptical wings. It'll do things that are sort of flat bottomed, which a lot of people think that you've got to have a flat bottom and a curved top to make lift, and that's not at all true. <laughs> uh, you have some options over here of uh, changing the speed, changing the altitude, uh, all kinds of all kinds of cool things you can play with. And this will generate data. The, oh, the user's manual, the owner's manual, or how you work all this stuff is actually described down below the package itself. And there are a lot of hyperlinks that will take you back to web pages within the beginner's guide to explain what you're seeing and why this works. There's also a cute little button here if you want to download the applet and store it on your computer so you don't have to go on the World Wide Web every time. Uh, it's a standalone Java applet, so you bring it down, you unzip it, and all you do is click on a thing that says foil.html, and it'll launch this thing with the user's manual or without it and uh, let you play around. Now, this can be very 
complex for younger students. So we have a, what's called an elementary version of this. And the elementary version of FOIL SIM doesn't bring up a bunch of different input panels or anything. It just lets you click something up or click it down. And as you increase the speed, the output variable is right here. And I think this is going up by 20 miles per hour for every click, and it'll go down by 20 miles per hour for every click. And you can also change the angles, and you can also change the shape. So all of the parameters that you could change with the other guy, you can do with this. And over here is being output only the lift and drag with a color-coded bar, bar, bar graph and, and the hard numbers. And our thinking with this is that you can use this guy like we would use a wind tunnel to generate data and then have the kids learn to plot, learn to plot their data, learn to graph stuff. It's kind of cool. Uh, lift and drag changes linearly with the wing area. And that's one of the parameters on here, that you, ch you can change the wing area. So as you change the wing area, It'll make a nice straight line graph. But lift and drag changes as the square of the velocity. So for kids that think everything is a straight line, you can real quick have them graph something that isn't a straight line. It ends up being a nice parabola. And uh, the faster, you, when you double the speed, you'll get four times the lift and four times the drag. Uh, when you change altitude, that changes the density of the air in a rather complex way. There's a lot of exponentials in the things in how the atmosphere changes with altitude. So we've got that atmosphere modeled inside the software, and you get the right answers, but it's kind of hard to graph out. It's, it's not a nice, straightforward, linear or, or uh, parabola. It can end up being, being a little loopy. So it's kind of fun. Again, things that, that you can have the kids learn. Uh, that idea of learning about how the atmosphere works is its own um, piece of software. Uh, again, going back over here, if you go down here, there's a little interactive atmosphere simulator, which is kind of an eye opener as soon as she boots in. There we go. And what we do here is we have a little airplane that you can mouse on and move the airplane up and down to different altitudes. We got a thermometer gauge and we got a pressure gauge. And it's kind of interesting. When you're flying on an airliner up here at 35,000 feet, outside the window, it's 60 below zero Fahrenheit. Uh, most people don't think about that, but that's exactly <laughs> Uh, the temperature on the other side. So uh, there are some parameters as well that change with the speed of the airplane. Uh, you can output either the graphs or you can output a little table of data uh, to look at how the pressures on the on the airplane change, how the forces change, how the temperature change, uh, and all those things, all the equations that describe how this works are given on another web page. So you can go right in here and get exactly what the equations are that that little atmosphere simulator was solving. Uh, again, what you do with it, and there are activities, again, that teachers have worked up um, based on these kinds of ideas for the atmosphere simulator. Uh, let's see what other cool simulators have we got here, and then maybe we'll just throw it open for Q&A. Um, oh, I mentioned model rockets. Kids like to build model rockets. And uh, I have a piece of software. Again, it's for free. Uh, there's, a, there's a commercial package out there called RockSim, which is pretty good. But it was intended for uh, people who are into amateur rocketry. So it's got a gajillion buttons and things and lets you look at the designs of metal rockets 
and things where engine costs 100 bucks and stuff like that. And most teachers don't want to do that. Uh, most teachers are, are teaching more fundamental principles. And uh, kids can learn from my, so my software. Uh, doesn't take them any higher than D engines. You can do A, Bs, and Cs and D engines. Um, also half A's if, if you're trying to save money and make the little bitty engines. Uh, and, and you have the options of looking at uh, uh, stomp rockets and uh, water rockets as well. So you can design that stuff. But that's what sits in uh, a rocket modeler. Again, we've got one um, that part of rocket modeler actually solves for the trajectory that the rocket flies. And in solving for that trajectory, we have to develop the equations of an object moving through the air. And that's the same as a baseball that's hit. So this hit modeler is kind of derived from rocket modeler and um, will let you set up a baseball being hit from home plate and I've got a wall out here at 350 feet. And the key is you get to, with the slider, set up the speed, the angle, and what the drag coefficient is on the ball, and whether there's wind blowing or not. And then you do a swing, and the thing takes off, and you can see whether it, uh, whether it makes it out of the stadium or not. You can take this to different stadiums. All the different stadiums are located at different altitudes, and different kinds of uh, atmospheric conditions. Um, so that's, a, that's that little thing. Uh, again, we have this one on kites as well. It'll let you design a diamond kite or a box kite or a whole bunch of different kinds of kites and then, uh, and then solve for how well it flies. So the idea here would be to have the kids do some computer simulations and see what, how, you know, look at building the very best kite design they could build and then go build it and go fly it and compare what what you see when you fly against what the computer predicts. I think kids are a little too trusting of computers. As somebody who works in computers, I don't trust them very much. And I know the good old garbage in, garbage out. So um, letting the kids experience the thing of doing a prediction with a computer program of how a kite's going to work, how a model rocket's going to work, how a wing's going to work, and then actually building one and seeing how it doesn't agree with the, with the computer programs. And then making an explanation of why it doesn't agree leads to a little deeper understanding of, uh, of science and math and engineering. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Boonga, boonga. Oh, okay. Well, I got a whole bunch of other simulators that we that are, are in the, uh, I believe you're going to get a copy of this PowerPoint thing, so this guy will talk about some of the other ones that we just don't have time to look at. Just remember, every simulator has a website associated with it that will give you all the science and math. Most of the web pages have teacher-generated activities that we looked at. A lot of them have animations. And the animations are what are called animated GIF images. So you're free to grab those guys uh, and drop them into your PowerPoint, make your PowerPoints a little more interesting. And then we have 10 different uh, podcasts that you can download on forces and motion with Wilbur and Orville Wright explaining it. Again, I think we talked about these guys. Uh, the pages actually break down into information on general science, like Newton's laws, lots of math diagrams, three-body diagrams. Um, this is how engineers think and work um, and how to do those. There's a lot of very fundamental mathematics. Here we were talking about the various ratios that occur on a triangle. And then the page that follows this actually names this ratio of the opposite side to the bottom as being the tangent of this angle. The cool thing here is that we've got three triangles with the same angle. The sizes have changed, but the ratio of this side to this side is the same for each one. That's, that's the power of the tangent or the power of any of the trig functions. We've got lots of equations. 
Uh, again, here's another example. When I talk, there are a lot of animated pages you can grab. This is looking at how an elevator makes the nose of the airplane go up and down. We have a lot of photographs. These are, again, from uh, taken by uh, Orville Wright of Wilbur flying at uh, Kitty Hawk. We have the podcasts. And right now, this is what I'm working on kind of as we speak. We've, we've got a middle school version uh, of things at the Beginner's Guide to Aeronautics. That's these kids' pages. They're, they're much simpler than some of my college stuff. We're, there's an interest from NASA headquarters to start looking at green technologies. Uh, I have a windmill, or I have a windmill, I have a wind tunnel, and I also have a windmill. And uh, I've had some students that have been testing the windmill in the wind tunnel, uh, getting data for me that's going to end up uh, uh, with a whole group of web pages as well. Uh, the, the current administrator of NASA, Associate Administrator for Education, Leland Melvin, is an interesting guy because he is both an astronaut uh, and a son of teachers, so he has an interest in teaching. He knows the science and math because he used to work at Langley and he's an astronaut. And he tried out for the Detroit Lions of the National Football League. So there's a lot of aerodynamics and science and math of football. And uh, Leland's had me develop uh, the beginning of some activities. We're going to make a new group. We've got stuff on baseball and we got stuff on soccer, but we're going to do stuff on American football and some stuff on gravity and orbital mechanics. Uh, one of the things I've found from talking with kids uh, through our digital learning network is a lot of kids just don't understand how gravity works. Uh, they think that once you get into outer space, gravity goes away and that astronauts are weightless because there's no gravity. And we're looking to explain that, no, that astronauts are weightless because they're falling. They're in a free fall. It's not that gravity goes away. And we're starting, and you, there are ways to explain that, and we're working on some, some websites to do that. All right, I guess that kind of wraps it up. Uh, let's, let's throw this open for Q&A. Uh, if you can somehow work your magic on your end so I can see people, I'm still seeing myself. Um, okay, but I'm free here now to answer any questions you've got about any of this stuff. I know that was a lot of stuff. That was 15 years of work thrown at you in 45 minutes. So uh, it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> yep, see, and I see you and hear you. You've got lots of simulation, and I didn't. You were mentioning the math is explained somewhere, but I didn't quite catch that. And finally, is it explained well enough, or is the simulation software open enough that if kids wanted to actually go in there and change the actual software, could they do that? Um, is it pretty easy for you to just open up at least maybe one example of where that math is located? Sure. Um, sure. Well, I, I think I, I, I showed you the one on the atmosphere. Uh, yeah, I think that guy is, is still sitting here. This is, hello, good. I think if I go back, here's the little software that models how pressures and temperatures change with altitude. And if you come down here in the user, sort of the user's manual for the software, they'll talk about changes in the atmosphere, um, and that you can go to this website. If we just talked about the atmosphere, this is one of my favorite pictures. It shows up a little better on the on the web than I, than what I'm seeing here on the TV. But a lot of people think of the atmosphere as being some giant, thick uh, protection of, from all beasties from outer space, and it's really only 60 miles thick. Uh, relative to an 8,000 mile diameter Earth. So the atmosphere of the Earth is just wrapped around, um, wrapped around the Earth. 
Uh, if you were going to model it with a basketball, you'd get a piece of cellophane and wrap it around the basketball, and that would be the proper model of the thickness of the atmosphere. And what aerodynamicists do, we need to know how things change in the atmosphere. And there are mathematical models of how the pressure changes, and it's an exponential, and how the temperature changes, and that actually changes linearly in the lowest part of the atmosphere. Then there's a, a spot in the atmosphere beginning at about 36,000 feet where the temperature stays relatively constant all the time. It's at about minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And the pressure still, be, still changes exponentially. So we show the equations here. Now, to explain how this works, we actually have other pages here on what is temperature, <laughs> both from kind of a macro um, a macro look at it, a large scale look at what is temperature, and then a, a small scale look. That the temperature is really nothing but sort of the average kinetic energy of all the little molecules that are running around in a gas. And when we're talking about the temperature outside is 50 degrees, that's the temperature of the atmosphere, 50 degrees. So again, these guys have explanations. Uh, here's some things about how to convert from degrees centigrade to degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Kelvin and uh, all the different temperature scales and where they came from. And again, the, there are teacher activities that, uh, that go with all this stuff. Is that what, is that what you were looking for, for, for one example? The, the, the airplane wing's a little more complex because the, the, the mathematics of it is more complex. Um, airflow going by a wing is, is kind of tricky. And, and when I say complex, I mean really complex, complex variables. Um, a plus A plus B I uh, kind of stuff. And we do what's called conformal mapping, which is sort of like morphing from flow around one object to flow around another object. So um, it's in there. It's, it's some of this stuff. Some of it's hard to find. Some of it, I mean, some of it's hard to understand. Some of it's easy to understand. But I give all of it. Now, when you download the software, you saw that little yellow button that said you can download the software. When you download the software, these things are Java applets. So they're written in the Java language. And there's a whole bunch of things, something.class, something.class, something.class. And that's how Java works um, to, uh, to run the computer program. All the something.class guys are made when you compile it. There's, you, you do a, a compiler uh, that kind of half, half makes an executable. And I say half an executable because when I deliver it, I don't know where I'm delivering it. I don't know if I'm delivering it to a PC or a Mac. And those guys have different representations of zeros and ones in the computer. So when they've created the Java programming language, they have a Java compiler that sends down these .class files. And then you have to do something on the other end called the Java runtime environment, the JRE, that kind of adds the next part that goes with your specific kind of computer. And this stuff's all invisible to the user. It's all hidden in whatever browser you use. Uh, so if you use Internet Explorer, it's got the JRE in there. And if you use Mozilla, it's in there. And if you use Firefox or somebody, whatever browser you use, uh, it's getting the other part of the Java. Now, when you ask about kids modifying the programs, when you download it, I give you the source. This, the source is there as something.java. And the kids are welcome. It's in the public domain. Uh, if they know how to program Java, they're welcome to take that, modify it, do whatever they want with. Except when they get in trouble, don't come back to me and ask me to fix the problems. Because I ain't going to know what you did. <laughs> you know, and, and with computer programs, you change one little line someplace, 
for some other reason and then something doesn't work and then you, you're over here messing around and uh, I've wasted a lot of time trying to solve people's computer problems uh, where I don't get the whole story so I, I you can have the source you can do whatever you want with it complex solutions that you talked about because this is something that I am always looking for um, resource material on because kids want to know. They want to know why complex numbers. What good is this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, the method here, <laughs> the method up. here is called uh, the Kuda Joukowsky. There's a thing on conformal mapping. And the Kuda Joukowsky transformation. Wait, how do I so there's a z is x plus i y, and the mapping function is z plus one over z. Tom, and down in here, there's actually derivations of how all this works. Uh, can you can you go back one step? Just sure. Where's that? How do you get that? Page? This is the index. What? Under, which one? Under, what uh, heading? The arrow index. It's in the arrow pages, so this is under the arrow index. And it's down here in analysis techniques. As it turns out, the equations that we're solving are what are called the Euler equation. They're differential equations. Uh -huh. Very ugly, but that's what we're solving. And the Euler equations are actually simplifications of the bigger, ugly Navier-Stokes equations. <laughs> which is how I've made my career. There's a thing on Navier-Stokes here as well. But the very first solution that was generated was lift around a rotating cylinder. If you take a cylinder and you rotate it in the right coordinate system, you can generate aerodynamic lift. And actually, this, this, is, just a, this is a little simple guy that show how that works. And this page has gotten me in a lot of uh, a lot of business because there was actually a guy uh, by the name of Flettner before World War II that proposed taking, or this was in the 20s after World War I, uh, that proposed putting spinning cylinders on a boat. And then as the wind would blow this, it would generate a lift force and actually propel the boat through the water. And Jacques Cousteau uh, actually was going to build uh, the Calypso number no. 2 with these kind of things. These are called Flettner rotors. And um, this gets referenced, this page gets referenced a lot. And I, I get uh, inquiries from uh, people who want to go off and build a Flettner rotor. So the math and science is in there. And and if you need more, you've got my email address, and I'll be glad to work with you more on, uh, on even fleshing this out. Uh, as I said, we've been working on this thing for a long time, and most of the stuff I do now, I go wherever people ask me to do stuff. So if you've got an interest uh, in complex variables and applications of complex variables, this would be really cool. Thank you. Another question. Jeez, what else? We're a little overwhelmed here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there's a thing in here, too, about paper airplanes. Uh, I do a thing with gliders, and I have some... Uh, some plans for paper airplanes. Paper airplanes are are uh, kind of cool when you think about them. Yeah. And it, it's a good it's a good way to introduce kids to putting in aerodynamic surface. And all it calls cost you is eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. I actually have some plans here for kids that have never folded a paper airplane. Uh, exactly how to fold them. This could be dangerous, but go ahead and show us because they got a lot. There, yeah, they, they will. Where, where is it again? It's down there under gliders. Uh, 
So I give them plans for two different airplanes so they can compare and contrast. And down here are sort of the plans, and you can download the plans. And it's just fold on line one, fold on line two, fold on line three, and uh, it'll produce an airplane. And uh, the thing that you download for this uh, is sized uh, to go right through your Xerox machine. I've actually done a weird little activity on careers. Um, there's a career activity that I do with paper airplanes where I divide kids up into little companies. And you're company one, and you're company two, and you're company three. And I want you in the next 15 minutes to design me a paper airplane that will stay in the air the longest. And the activity is available here from the web as well. And what we do is we, we kind of give the kids paper to fold up their paper airplanes. And then I give each company just one piece of yellow paper. And I put the kids in groups of four or five. And I try to make them diverse intentionally. So that when you're all done and after you do the fly off, you go back and debrief. And the activity was not about building a paper airplane. It was about the process. It was about did everyone participate. It was about how did you pick the design. It was about did one guy run roughshod over everybody else. How did the other guys feel. Did everybody get to participate. Um, it, th there's a whole bunch of debriefing charts that uh, get into a lot of things that I have to go to training for a lot because they become problems in the real world. And kids will run into exactly the same problems in doing something as, as silly as building a paper airplane. Do you have that debrief uh, sort of scenario printed up someplace? or? Yep, yep, you can download that. Uh, is that at the bottom of this page? Uh, yeah, right at the bottom of that page, that web page. Hello there. Where we show the paper airplanes yeah. and you get the designs. There's this thing that says activities, teamworks in aeronautic. And if you do this, or teamwork in aerospace, this will walk you right through all the uh, various how airplane companies work. Um, and the debrief slides are sort of, oh, here's the list of materials you need. There's the, here's what I want you to do. OK, kids, form up your task. I also put a time constraint on them to teach the kids that you have to manage your time. And here are the debrief questions about how did your team get the design? Did your team have a leader? How was he selected or she selected? Did everyone participate? I don't know. Do you feel constrained or pressured by the time limit? Did you worry about other teams stealing your designs? And then we kind of dig into each one of these questions. So there's a whole lot of questions in here. And that's all, again, available uh, at our website. And there's a PowerPoint version of this guy. This is sort of the web page version. And there's a, a PowerPoint version uh, that you can uh, download and, and and get your own copy and stuff. All kinds of goodies. Any other questions? It only took you 15 years, huh? Yeah, I only worked on this for 15 years. <laughs> and I'll be honest with I'll be, I I'm always I always try to be real honest with teachers and students and stuff. And uh, I had a very successful technical career when I was younger. 
uh, for the first 20 years of my career here. I've been here 35 years, so the first 20 years I had a very successful technical career. I got re promoted right to the top. I did international travel. I published a lot of papers, did a lot of cool stuff, and I have much more fun and it's more enjoyable and more meaningful to me to work with teachers uh, and doing this educational stuff than it ever was in my technical career. I, I keep bumping against the the sides around here uh, because I did get promoted all the way to the top. Uh, there are technical people around here that think I should just be doing all technical stuff and I try to tell them at this stage of my life it's, it's more important uh, to help teachers and help students learn the science and math. So I, I've had a lot of fun with it. It's, uh, it's, it's cool stuff. It is cool stuff. It's great stuff. Oh, and, and when I was talking about those, uh, if we go to that arrow index, when I talked about all the teacher activities, if you go to that arrow index, and you get, and you get the arrow index, when we first went, came to that, oh, not that one, hello, bingo, come back. Uh, when, we, when we first came to the very first page, the first guy at the top is the index. So when you click to the index, that's how you get to the thing where we found the paper airplanes and all that. Over here are the activities. And there are some activities that are built around foil sim, around the airfoil simulator. And these are all the activities. So every one of these has four pages generated by these teachers. And there's kind of a spell out of what, the, what it is. So there's all those on foil sim. There's all these that are just using basic aerodynamics, may not use foil sim, but uses uh, things about wing area or center of gravity or uh, lift and velocity relationships and how you graph the squares and how ailerons make airplanes roll and all these different activities here are all in one place. So you can come in here and, and shop by grade level shop by title, shop by uh, science area, whether it's physics or math or algebra or chemistry or any of those. And you can get from all of those right here. There's also a little uh, gallery of airplanes. If you ever need an airplane picture or a description of a certain kind of an airplane, we have a whole bunch of things that were produced by one of the teacher here. So. Lots of stuff here. There's even a crossword puzzle. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find when you go clicking around in here. See, over the 15 years, uh, education has kind of come and gone within NASA. Depending on who the administrator of NASA is, education gets the big spotlight on it or spotlight moves someplace else. And in 15 years, it's changed. And there were a lot of activities that were generated by a lot of people that uh, in the last go around, uh, education wasn't as uh, popular as it is under uh, Administrator Bolden and uh, Leland Melvin. And so, there were people that were going to give up their web pages and give up their, they were just going to let the stuff expire. And I was kind of in it for the long haul. So every time somebody went to expire their things, I grabbed them. And that's why this web page is so big. And there's many, many authors and many, many sections because I've grabbed stuff from lots of different people. Uh, on, the, on the idea of PowerPoint, I, I know a lot of teachers want to or, or talk from PowerPoint. Uh, on this um, index page, right at the top, there are some things about PowerPoint files. And if you click on that hyperlink, it'll take you to a whole bunch of talks on various topics 
that you can download and have your own copy of these PowerPoint things. Some of them are space, some of them are airplanes, the career talk is in here. Uh, there were things about uh, theories of lift, forces in motion, kites, uh, all kinds of different stuff. So if you click on any one of these guys, um, let's pick let's pick a, a thing on aerodynamic lift. Uh, there's just a whole PowerPoint talk where I've gone through and grabbed slides uh, from the beginner's guide and put them out here uh, in my own the way I would give a talk about how airplanes work. You're free to copy those, modify them, change them, do whatever you want with them. They're all in the public domain. Any other questions? Lots of stuff. And, if, and again, I'm available for consulting if, if there's too much stuff or you want to go in and find just something smaller, shorter, easier. That's a good idea. Where's Tom? Yeah, go ahead. You guys got any other questions? One more. All right, well, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you very much. Okay, so again, it's. Let me, uh, there's the email address you want to get. Thomas.j.vincent. Yep, yeah. with an O. Okay, if I give them a copy of this PowerPoint? You better believe it. Okay. That's why we made it. Okay. <laughs>